Okay. All right. Welcome everyone to Progressive Discussions. Climate change, it's very real because uh, it went from Cinco de Mayo spring-like weather to freezing, uh, what's the low gonna be, 18 degrees or lower? It was eight today, it's supposed, it was supposed to be eight. Eight degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, when you say today, you mean last night or, t or tonight? Last night. Last night. And the well, wind chill was zero to five. Now, if that is in insanity, I don't know what it is. I mean, really, I was going outside with no sweater, jacket, or nothing. I was going out with a t-shirt, a pair of jeans, and uh, enjoying it, and then all of a sudden, Boom. old man Winter came back and says, uh, I'm back. Man. Okay. That's March for you. Yeah. Okay, let's see how we're going to do this. Uh, Oh, here we go. <coughs> Tuesday, pick Tuesday's children. Keep the promise. Never forget. Donate your unusable clothing. Uh huh. You know how many phone calls I get from charitable organizations, and what I should do is I should create an an automated James P. Madonna um, voice saying. I'm wise to all you charities nowadays. I know you sell the stuff. I know you sell the stuff to the poor and we donate it for free. I know you have CEOs making um, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, if not a couple million like um, the American Red Cross. I know it's a scam. Hmm. What we need, oh sure, gotcha, we, you need it, huh? What we need, uh, clothing, women's, men's, children's, all types, sizes, clothing, accessories, you son of a fucking bitch. You know, cats, man. Incorporate. So the cat wants to go out, which means the cat's going to meow not too long from, not too far off from now because it's freezing outside. So you're going to meow, bust my balls, make me open the door again. Go. Out. She must, she must, uh, she must have had, he must have had a meeting with a certain someone to bust James's balls. All right. <clears throat> he fucked up my pirate flag? No. I'm fucking believable. Oh, Murphy's Law always hangs around people that deal with the hard-hitting truth. Papa Murphy now makes pizzas. Yeah, an Irish pizza. No. Has corned beef and cabbage on it? No. Uh, shoes, uh, I, they want everything. You might as well say draperies, curtains, all bedding items, shoes, clothing. Housewares, glasswares, jewelry and cosmetics? Hey. Jewelry? Yeah, right. We got to, oh, people are just getting. Why the hell would people give the jewelry to that? Toys, games, bikes, tools, tools of all kinds. Oh, and your thank you for your tax deductible donation. And then what do you do? You turn around and you sell the stuff to the poor. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> okay. This charity, TC Pickup Dog, look, I'm not saying that, I don't know if they sell it or not, but I'm just using this as an example for all of today's popular American uh, charities because they're constantly calling me. So from now on, if I don't recognize the, um, you know, I screen the calls. If I don't recognize the number, I'm not picking up. Let the voicemail take it. I'm sure. not picking up. What the hell? And that's that. All right. Keep the promise. Never forget. Donate your usable clothes. All right. That would be the first inductee into this week's Chiseler's Hall of Shame. My lucky uh, Blackthorn Shillelagh. All right. Now. Now we get on to the nitty gritty. Before, before the, the fucking cat meows. All right. Another inductee would be Bank of America. And why? It's not just Bank of America per se, but it's, it's all of uh, corporate America that um, 
that brags about how great their customer service is and how much they care about you, the customer or the client. Mm. I don't want to, I never want anybody from Bank of America to approach me telling me how, uh, telling me anything about their services. Because not only did they permanently uh, end the drive through uh, section with no tellers, they laid them off. Ever since they got new program in the ATM machines that does more, uh, has more functions, they only have one teller on duty. Mm. That's right. One teller on duty with a long line. Nice. All right. And on the weekends, especially holiday weekends, one of the two ATMs goes down. Yeah. And um, that sometimes they close down one ATM during the week, which means there's a, a long ass line on one ATM. So I told them. I got yes, 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 we yes. We know, we know. James, it sounds good. Yeah, but, but I says, yeah. What about a drive-through ATM machine? If you don't want to, if you don't want to uh, schedule the tellers like you did before when you cared, have a drive-through ATM. Oh, that sounds like an excellent idea. <laughs> I call the main office. They, uh, the the thing that I that sets me off right away is apologies. They must have apologized to me, Dr. Bill, a couple, at least two dozen times. Don't apologize to me. Do something. Do something. Fix the problem. Yeah. Don't yes me to death. Don't, you know, I told them about it. I says, people are very pissed off. People today, usually, not, not by choice, have very busy schedules, and they don't have time to be waiting on a long line. Hmm. Okay, same thing with all these supermarkets. They yes me to death, they apologize profusely, and guess what? There's still one teller on duty with a long line that goes right into the aisle. All right. They, they, must, they must be saving a lot of money because they have no customer service counter. They have no maintenance crew to mop up spills and stuff. They have no stock people to replenish the shelves. You know who the stock person is? The manager. The manager is, is putting out stock. Then when people get really pissed that they're online forever and their their ice cream is turning into a milkshake. Uh -huh. Okay, the manager opens up a register momentarily, momentarily, not that long. He alleviates the long line and then closes the register and goes back to to stocking shelves. Uh -huh. Now if the if the if the main office if the main office the corporate office and these evil greedy pieces of shit CEOs really cared about the customer they would they would show it in their actions okay so Bank of America and companies like Aldi which I'm still waiting for them to uh, go, uh, compete with Whole Foods they haven't gotten there yet like the article said, cheap, I don't know if it's greed or if it's a cheap motherfucking CEO or just just simply that the, the C, you know what, I have a few things to mention here. I'll say it at the end. All right, it now. It shouldn't be difficult uh, competing with Whole Foods with all the bad things they've been doing lately. Sure, tainted, uh, I mean, a so-called phony baloney uh, organic produce from uh, mainland China yeah. and and the uh, uh, what is his name John Mackey from uh, the, yeah. Texas the, yeah. the the main office is in the state of Texas he doesn't tell you it's it's bullshit no. organic tainted food from mainland China yeah. and you're paying top dollar for 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 bogus or organic food no actually all these is really in other ways an excellent store but but <laughs> I don't care how great your product line is no one in America today wants to wait on a line that long and um, it's like with Walmart they they did the same thing they brought in the uh, self checkout section where you scan your 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 items without a, uh, a cashier bag your own 
Yeah, get back your own. That too. No more bag boys. Oh, there were, that career is gone. Hold on. Alright, and what happens? I saw one cashier scheduled in the whole front end of Walmart in Garfield, New Jersey. One cashier. So, like my sister told me, Lisa said, it's across the board. This whole attitude, this whole uh, multitasking bullshit, downsizing, all this bullshit so the CEO can be more of a blood-sucking vampire. Actually, the, the, today's corporate American CEO is the poster boy for, for what capitalism really is. And um, all the, the crooked, the long, winding, crooked road always seems to end at a CEO's desk. And, and I'm going to explain it further. Okay. Verizon uh, Fios, in supposedly high-speed fiber optics internet connection, is not uh, the high-speed fiber op optics that uh, they claim it is. It is much faster than a cable modem. That is true. But um, my bandwidth is uh, has its moments. Sometimes. My internet is slow, I don't know why, because I'm supposed to have a dedicated fiber optics connection. So if it's dedicated, that means it's not shared. Why on earth do I have a slow internet sometimes? I don't know. Um, other than that, I have a beef with them concerning the cable TV. The same thing is occurring, a similar thing is occurring, with my Windows 10, which is Microsoft. And that is simply, not only am I bombarded with bloatware and their version of spamming, trying to force me to buy things I don't want, all right, Windows 10 and Verizon. Let me tell you what happened today with Verizon. I turn on the cable TV and um, I get a screen that wants me to purchase extra cable stations. Uh -huh. I don't want to. I tried everything. I tried hitting so many buttons on the remote. Couldn't get off of that page. I, I shut the TV off. I put it back on again. It reappeared again. They wanted me to, they, they were trying to, they were nagging me to buy some Comcast sports channel. Yeah. I don't want it. I couldn't get I couldn't get to the regular TV stations. They were forcing it on me. They were forcing it on me. And this is this is that's a client the, that pays monthly fees. That's the foot in the door of the sale. But it, it, it's they're more pushy than ever before, yeah. Doctor yes, Bill. Yes, because they can be. I couldn't get rid of it. It's, I'm telling you. I don't know if it's the Republican Party. I don't know if it's deregulation of American companies, but sales have been more obnoxiously pushy. It's everything for business. Then, biz, let me tell you something, there is nothing, unless you're rich and greedy, there is nothing positive about capitalism for the mainstream masses, for the poor, the middle class. There's nothing positive about it. It's just constant bombardment, and now they're forcing it on you. So I can't even turn the cable TV station on to, and, and just, get the channel I want. Now they're they're being, this is the first time this happened. So, Chisless Hall of Shame, Verizon as a company, as well as Microsoft with the bloatware, constantly pop up windows. You need this, why don't you get that? You need this, why don't you get that? Fuck you, Microsoft, and fuck you, Verizon. I don't want to buy anything else. I'm not interested in it. Your, your quarterly profits, just like the uh, charity, the major charities' administrative fees, are not my problem. I don't give a fuck. I, I, my loyalty is to my own wallet. Okay, here comes the worst. Mm. And then I'm done. All right.
I'm well, gonna what need... happened with the page? Are you still there? How can you get a channel? Oh, I finally hit a, I don't know if it was a menu or exit or I hit some button I finally went away. But it was relentless, Dr. Bill. It was relentless. Now, this is a pretty sad story, but it's true. But it might, things might work out. It's very, very upsetting story as well. Um, the, um, this involves a lawsuit uh, that is going on right now uh, for um, uh, immigrants, immigrant detainees that were kept uh, it, it supposedly, no, not supposedly, actually, in the course of 10 years, 60,000 uh, immigrant detainees, and uh, according to their names, they, they look like they were Hispanic, okay, maybe Mexicans, I don't know, 60,000 immigrant, immigrant detainees over the course of 10 years were kept at the Aurora detention facility in Colorado, okay, uh, which was owned, which was, which is a privatized prison owned by the GEO Group, owns it, G capital G-E-O Group owns this privatized prison in uh, the Aurora detention facility in Colorado, and uh, thousands of immigrants were forced to work for free, slave labor, slave labor, uh, with the threat of solitary confinement if they didn't work for free at this privatized prison. And, and like I said, the U.S. government sent them there. Okay? Ten years, 60,000 detainee immigrants. Now, the, the lawsuit is seeking more than $5 million in damages by attorney Brant Milstein, B R A N D T, Milstein, M I L S T E I N, is their attorney representing all the immigrants that were kept and forced to work for free at the Aurora Detention Facility in Colorado. You, the Amer the, the, the fascist corporate oligarch. Of, of the American, the United States government today is absolutely despicable. I, I definitely, this proves that the CEOs are tools of Satan in the end times. This proves that the conservative, um, I don't even want to say, Dr. Bill, I don't even want to say Republican or Democrat anymore. I, I, let's call them evil. Corporate whore establishment politicians. Uh, I know Gary No doesn't didn't like me to use the word whore. Maybe I should have used harlot or prostitute. The word whore upset him. Courtesan. Cor courtesan. Courtesan. What's that? That's a whore. Yeah, the average prostitute. The average your brother would, would know what that meant. She's a little higher. In the higher Oh, game. you mean like a like a, a call girl. You mean like the escorts that work in Las Vegas who come to the fancy schmancy hotel compared, rooms? Compared to the one on the street. Oh no, they don't, they don't do streets. I don't know. Oh no, they come. Maybe they come out of limos, yeah. wearing sable uh, stoles, whatever, right. mink coats, and but, you know, sophisticated. Sporting. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. They're 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 strictly uh, they're they're a class act. That's Which means they charge a lot more money. <laughs> of course. Oh man. It's, uh, um, and they always call it a. Uh, they don't call it. They don't. They don't give you like a price like uh, like on a menu of a restaurant. It would be like a, your gift donation uh -huh. of uh, 150 uh, roses or mangoes uh, is the required uh, 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 donation. Except, I think, well, Nevada is legal. But anyway, anyway, yes, corporate whore establish, establishment politicians, I'm sure, are all for the privatized prisons with modern-day slave labor. 
and you know they're gonna they're gonna I I imagine and you correct me if I'm wrong I imagine that an immigrant detainee sent there by the Department of Immigration is going to eventually be deported mm -hmm. now they're, you're, you're, you're already going to deport their ass. You're going to deport them. So why the fuck should they work for free for some... for the GEO group in a privatized prison if you're going to deport them anyway? It's like, you're going to deport them. So, now, do you see how obsessively... You know, I, I'm not even going to say... You know what? <laughs> this is beyond a psychological um, issue with these fil filthy, rich, greedy scumbags. This is evil. To me, this is downright evil. It's gotten out of hand. It's gotten out of hand, and you Americans ask for it. You don't want to follow alternative news. You want to stick to the two-party system. You want to vote. You, you poor slobs that don't have a pot to piss in. You want to continue to vote Republican. Trump and Trumpanzees, uh, evangelical, zealot, cultist freaks that only care about a fertilized egg. You want to keep voting and re-electing Republicans. Uh, you, um, what would you call them? The die-hard Democrats, neoliberals? The people that, that won't break away from the DNC. Die-hard so, Democrats. Die-hard Democrats. <laughs> Yeah. Corporatist, corporatism, corporatism, corporatist politicians. They're all for this because why? Gee, maybe their palms are greased. Maybe they're well, paid yeah. off. When something like that is built, of course, there's uh, hands Holy in crap. the pot. Ugh. So that was, this, that was the infuriating story. And uh, from what I understand, the, uh, the Muppet face pointy nose, pencil neck geek, Paul Ryan. He's after your Social Security and Medicare. He wants to steal it. They want to steal your money. He's out there with a PowerPoint right now <laughs> defending the Republican uh, health care plan, which is death. Nothing. <laughs> you know what the re you know the, the Republican health care plan facility, you know what it is? It's your local undertaker. Your funeral parlor is the is the local office for the Republican uh, health care plan. Oh man, that that's exactly what it is. See, they don't want they don't want health. They don't like healthy Americans. They don't. There's no money. There's no money in healthy American. And I mean, pharmaceutical industry wise, there's no money in healthy Americans. There's no money in dead Americans. They want people that are right in the middle yeah. between death and health. In other words, they want they want that su that sustainable sucker. It has yeah. a nice ring to it, right? Sustainable, sustainable sucker. Everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch. Yeah, you right? Um, and... Uh, Seven lucky bells for this week's show. Um, well, you know, Gary knows right about one thing. He's right about a lot of things, actually. He, uh, he um, mentioned occasionally about getting rid of toxic people from your life. Well, I'm in that process right now. You know, I think it was Al Capone who said it, who coined the phrase, do not mistake my kindness for weakness because you will find out the hard way, basically. You know what I mean? And the same thing goes for people that are takers and never give. They're, they're parasitic. I'm I'm in the process of realizing that Leo DeRocha was right. Nice guys do finish last in today's world. And like my, I don't need my divining rods, my copper divining rods. My prediction was right. 
The cat is meowing. Hold on. Yeah. And I don't blame him, but at the same time, I don't like. It. I'll work it into the show. Hi, Steve. Hey. For those that like black and white Felix Sylvester looking gatos, that is exactly what Steve looks like. All right, he's black and white. Okay, that's it. I need a rest. I need to enjoy my my tea. You're in the house. What more do you want? You want an affidavit from a notary public? public. Notary Republic? That was Ed Norton that said Republic. Okay. I guess that's it. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's it. Uh, next week will be uh, our St. Patrick's Day show for the very best in Irish imports. Go to XavierGifts.com. XavierGifts.com. And um, uh, for the, for for all of my co-hosts that I've done shows with, um, except for my buddy, Mr. Jeff Bankins, thank you very much for doing that wonderful show with me uh, for the second time. The the man with the strongest neck in the world by the Guinness Book of World Records, the Cajun strongman and minister, wow. Mr. Jeff Bankins of Louisiana, and also uh, Mr. Ronald J. Uh, Tirio from also from Louisiana. He's a craft beer and wine uh, reviewer. Okay, my greetings to him too. And an alligator because rush. Because we will do shows on Cajun food and craft beer, mm -hmm. which is actually perfect together because Cajun food is hot and spicy and it makes you more thirsty to mm -hmm. enjoy. Which should be, I like mine partially frozen. <laughs> so anyway, greetings to you. And as far as the, the other co-hosts that have been blowing me off, you all can sincerely go fuck yourselves. Mm -hmm. With all due respect. I love it when people say that. With all due respect, I have something to say that might hit a raw nerve. Okay. It's all yours. Pope Francis says he is open to the possibility of permitting married men to become priests. That, oh! Finally, a priest will, will be permitted to get laid. <laughs> I mean, you know, in a heterosexual uh, way with a consenting adult, if you get my sarcasm. To address the serious shortage of Catholic priests in some countries. Hey man, they're getting blue balls. Yeah. No, but who wants to be a priest? It's it's easier to be a minister, be a minister, not or you know, or non-denominational minister. You know, at least you can, well, you remember, can date women. There's nothing in the Bible that honors. Uh, Mar the marriage ceremony? No, uh, being uh, celibate. Celibate. I don't. Yeah. Jesus never suggested to his disciples that, that they they correct. should real they should be celibate and and come and follow me. What he said was, sell your uh, material possessions, give them to the poor, and come follow me. Yeah. Not to be celibate. So what you had with the Catholic Church is a bunch of people trying really hard to be celibate and filthy rich. <laughs> so they, they, they obeyed neither of the suggestions by Jesus. All right. The Pope raised the idea in an interview with the German newspaper Die Zeit. He ruled out the prospect of allowing single men who are already priests to marry, but was open to the idea of allowing unmarried laymen or men already married to be ordained. He ru uh, the Pope raised the prospect in the context of allowing viri probate, Latin for tested men to be ordained in places with a scarcity 
our priests. It's, 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 it's totally preposterous nowadays in this day and age to expect men. Any day and age. To any, well, they, hey, men had, men had the same, same genitalia hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. That's how we became, that's why me and Dr. Bill are here. You know, so I mean, it, it, it's insane to expect celibacy out of any man. You know, hey man, my grandfather used to say a stiff dick has no conscience. He told the newspaper the lack of Catholic priests was an enormous problem for the church. We need to think about whether very probate could be a possibility. I thought when you said probate, I thought you meant probate. Probe, like isn't probing your penis into somebody? P-R-O-B-A-T-I, oh, okay. probate. Right. If so, we would need to determine what duties they could undertake, for example, in remote communities. Pope Francis said allowing priests in training to choose whether to be celibate was not the solution. The idea of permitting married priests has been simmering at lower levels in the church in recent years. In 2014, Bishop Erwin Krautler, Bishop of Zingu, in the Brazilian rainforest, told the Australian newspaper Salzburger Neckrichen that he spoke to the Pope about the desperate shortage of priests in his region. The Austrian-born bishop noted that in his diocese, Brazil's largest with 800 church communities and 700,000 faithful, there were only 27 priests. Yeah. The bishop said, the Pope made it clear he would be open to ideas from the bishops as to how to address the problem, including ordaining married men. According to The Tablet, an international Catholic news weekly, in his latest interview, the Pope discussing the possibility of female deacons saying theologians, theologians, excuse me, should study the example of scripture. What did this mean at the time of the Bible? What does it mean today, he said. Don't be afraid. That makes us free. The idea that a Roman Catholic Church priests should not be married is based on a certain biblical passage and a belief Shit. that a priest acts in persona Christi, in the person of Christ, and should therefore be celibate like Christ. The Vatican accepts married priests in certain circumstances, such as those in the Eastern Rite, sects of the Church, as well as married members of the Anglican or Episcopal churches mm -hmm. who convert to Catholicism. Yeah, I mean, oh, the, um, the epidemic um, uh, situation um, with uh, supposedly celibate Catholic priests. Hold on. Uh, committing uh, pedophilia, it's always it's a homosexual pedophilia with the altar boys and whatever. You never hear about the about the nuns jumping the altar boys bones. You never hear about that. <laughs> it's always a a, a, a a homosexual pedophilia committed by the Catholic priests. Now if they're allowed to marry, which means they're allowed to date, um, then uh, they have no excuse, you know. I think I think it's it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. I also think that the same thing should apply to nuns, since Pope Francis is a very progressive man. 
uh, it would be foolish of him to deny uh, the women, the, la the ladies, equal rights. And I think there should be a, um, not call her a priest, give her another title, but there should be a, a female pri priest equivalent. Priestess. Of a nun, high priestess. No, not high, but then it'll Zena, go. Zena, warrior princess. Zena, Zena. Call her Zena. That's it. it. That's it. We coined it. <laughs> All right. There should be an equivalent. Come on, Pope Francis. You're a progressive man. Probably. Well, actually, you're more progressive than a lot of Democrats in the United States. <laughs> so, you know, he should understand this. Anyway, continue. While columnist Charles Stiles' political leanings are evident in his writings, and as much as he would like to find some way to link Donald Trump to David Sampson's downfall, he went way over the line with his proclamation that immigrants who clean offices and pick vegetables are being swept up by President Donald Trump's deportation force. That's actually quite true. Of course it's true. Uh, our produce has been rotting out on the field in, in America's southern, on America's southern, uh, deep southern farms like Alabama. You know, uh, um, I think the problem with Samson is he, 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 cut, he got his hair cut too short. Leaving out the key modifier, illegal. Stiles' claim about immigrants being swept up is not only false, it seems to have been written to strike fear in the hearts of all America's legal residents and immigrants. Yeah, sure. They don't, they don't talk about Caucasian European immigrants. Yep, they only talk about immigrants of color, which includes Muslims and Latin Americans, and they're never about the white immigrants. Hey, who on earth is going to replace all those uh, 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 immigrant uh, nannies, uh, gardeners, pool service, you know, pool boys, uh, uh, and pickers? No, the people, the people that that work for. For, for low wages at, at a rich person's mansion. Exactly. All the filthy rich at the mansions. They got all, you know, he, um, Republican uh, Christine Todd Whitman, yeah. which former governor of New Jersey had an illegal working yeah. for her. They, they watch their they kid, like the little spoiled coddled monsters. They like that. Kids, they, they, they clean the pool, they do the gardening landscape they they clean the houses like the maid service they but they butter but butler but they're, they're, they're like butlers they do you know they'll answer the door for the lazy fucks the rich people where, where are they gonna get all this uh, cheap help to replace them no good goobly goo more important is the rights of comments added absolutely nothing to the story of Samson's transgressions. Well, a, I like to follow patterns in life. Many things form patterns, and conservative Republicans certainly are up there in the top five predictable pattern uh, formers. Setters, whatever you want, to, however you want to call them. Oh, I forgot. I'm so sorry. A shout out to Mr. Paul Mantia, a tenant rights activist, musician, and uh, uh, exotic clothing designer and make and, and tie dye shirt maker. A shout out to you. He lives in northern Florida now. He's from uh, the New York area. Paul I believe all Americans wish to unite and support their president. Unfortunately, since day one, there has been chaos, doublespeak, 
endless attacks on the media and ludicrous, unsubstantiated indictments of President Barack Obama. There is serious division, not only between both parties, but among Republicans as well. And now national security agencies have to repudiate the outrageous and unfounded claims of wiretapping that were inspired by something a talk radio host read on an alt-right website. This is frightening and undermines the foundation of our democracy. President Donald Trump's endless stream of bizarre tweets must stop. Hey, Saturday Night Live, you gotta hire Rosie O'Donnell to be Bannon. She's perfect. He is eroding confidence not only in his leadership, but also in our political system, both home and abroad. The trust of the American people and our allies must be earned. Until he demonstrates prudent behavior, releases his taxes, and is resolute in punishing Russia for interfering in our election, Trump will be viewed with the same skepticism and mistrust that he harbors for our institutions of government. Well, hey, uh, you know, I was just thinking today that if the media, if the U.S. media was not so biased, it's very possible Bernie Sanders would be in the White House today. If, if the media was, was like old-fashioned journalism, because even if the primaries even if, if Bernie got, even if they try to screw Bernie uh, at the uh, at the polls, um, the a fair media would uh, allow the asses of the masses to get to know the difference between the candidates and get to know Bernie Sanders a lot better than he was known, and uh, because his face would be all over the U.S. media if it was fair journalism. But, you know, so much for a fair American society. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone had any doubts about Donald Trump's paranoia, unless accusing Barack Obama of bugging him, is a way of deflecting Russian connections. Oh then we all should be very, very afraid. Or like Jesse Ventura says, follow the money trail of course, yeah. with everything. Those who voted for him are likely to believe him, not because they are paranoid, but simply because some are uninformed. And while all this is going to occupy the media's attention, over the coming months and weeks, and let us not be diverted from the disastrous environmental laws the administration is back. It is this damage to our planet that should cause great fear and outrage. Not wild stories about spying. We are likely to see many so-called Watergates under this administration over the next four years. Maxine Waters uh, flat out told Donald Trump prepared to be impeached. Well, yeah, there is stuff going on right now. And yeah, something like... Wherein he's involved in business. And he lied on the oath about... With uh, other countries, which is an impeachable offense. Uh, uh, particularly true. a country that happens to be very fond of vodka. Yeah. If you get my sarcasm. Yeah, and I think I think there has been a lot of lying under oath when it comes to the Republican Party and the Trump administration. Yeah. And quite a bit. 
Representative Devin Nunez, the Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, was asked by a reporter about Trump's tweets accusing President Obama of wiretapping captain his office. His answer was that the press takes the president's comments literally. This is not the first time I have heard this ridiculous excuse. It is extremely troubling that Trump doesn't yet understand that careless and baseless accusations can have serious consequences across the globe. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, tea baggers, which who, who most often don't have a pot to piss in, are saying, leave Trump alone, let him do his job. Let him do his job. Well, what is his job? To, 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 to kill the poor off? Because the only, the only health care plan that was ever proven to really work for everyone is the single-payer universal Medicare for all plan. And it was proven to be the only one that would take care of everyone. That's it, period. And they want to privatize everything, the two-party system. Everything's got to be privatized. I mean, everything's got to be privatized. The Affordable Care Act is privatized, right? The Affordable Care Act, in some instances, the higher, the higher prices. Yeah, I know. I know a poor slob that they had a poor uh, stuff. That you got subsidies. You know, there and Med and Medicaid. Medicaid. Which are paying these things for the poor. Well, when, so the poor don't have anything. When you have people like in New Jersey with Medicaid, which is totally f fucked up. It <laughs> it works. It doesn't work. The pharmacist runs it through. One day it works. He runs it through another day. It comes back rejected. It's totally screwed up, but people with Medicaid in New Jersey, they, a lot, many of them have what they call Horizon of New Jersey. <laughs> it is it is not the, the regular uh, highfalutin Horizon that people that work full-time have. Right. That's it the is, It is the um, Affordable Care Act version yeah. of Horizon. You know, they, they, uh, it's like taking a regular HMO and taking a one step down from, you know, your typical HMO that working people that have jobs that, that actually compensate them have, okay? So... Done. Uh, I don't have time for this Ben Carson. So you want, you want to just oh Ben it's Carson? Very important. Oh Ben Carson. Yeah. Oh Ben Carson. Yeah, the one who the one who says uh, that the slave trade that slaves are equivalent immigrants. to to the uh, to immigrants coming here coming here for the American dream working for less than minimum wage with no benefits. Well, yeah. you know the, he forgets that slaves don't get paid, right? Okay. Not only that, they were captured. <laughs> they, against their they were will. They captured against their will and brought here. Yeah. Well, who is that? Uh, um, uh, oh, Lionel on, on Archie Bunker, on the, All in the Family, uh, when Archie was saying uh, a bunch of crap about, he says something about slavery, and, and Lionel says, well, uh, uh, somebody, they must have, they must have told the right people somebody came and got us. Something like that. It's, you know, right. considering how great, oh, Archie, I think, was boasting about how great America was. And then Lionel says, yeah. And then he mentioned the slave trade. You know, you, you, he says, like, you people come a long way and all that jazz. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. Lionel says, says something to that effect. It was either Lionel or Sammy Davis Jr. Probably Sammy. On, in the episode. 
of all yeah, the family. Or he kissed them. Yeah, on the kissed lips. Kissed Archie. On the lips. No, oh, he planted picture. a big one. Yeah, with the picture. And they took a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> he did that on purpose. Yeah. God rest his soul. Yeah. All right, um, we're, we're going to break for lunch. And then uh, you're going to see how to defeat a conservative uh, Bible verses. Just simply hit the pause button, read and learn if you're capable of doing that, uh, followed by promo. All right. And okay. we'll, we will be back for the balance of the show. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter 
that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censor pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like newsletter censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. So that's it. We're ready to go. Seven lucky bells for the balance of progressive discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna, and I'm here with the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Go ahead. A hypothetical narrative for your consideration. A man climbs through the window. Shoot him. Of a sleeping girl. Shoot him. She stirs. She stirs. Wakes up and starts to scream. But he punches her e. with a closed fist. He's a rapist, maybe. Brandishing a gun, he vows to kill her parents asleep in the next room if she makes another sound. What if he is if he's a rapist and she makes a sound and she's bound to make a sound? She nods in tearful comprehension and he is upon her, tearing at her night clothes and then violently makes love to her. Uh, isn't good. It could be argued that there's nothing wrong with the foregoing description. After all, the basic mechanics of lovemaking and rape are the same sexual intercourse. They say it's a power thing with rape. It's not a so much a sexual thing as a power thing. She needs to get a tough dog. She needs to get a Rottweiler, yeah. a Rottweiler or at least a, a German Shepherd or something. But if you understand why that argument would be specious and offensive, please explain it to Ben Carson. Uh-oh. Oh, the Ben Carson reading, ah. The new Secretary of Housing and Urban Development just describes slaves as immigrants. <laughs> oh, God. This happened on Monday in a speech before the HUD staff. This is like an insane asylum, this Trump administration. Carson waxed eloquent about America as a nation built by people from other places. Then he said, there are other immigrants who came here in the bottom of slave ships. Well, are there really other immigrants? Not, not European immigrants. They worked even harder, even, even uh, longer for less. For but less? They, less but, than zero? But they too had a dream. But they worked for less? Less than zero? Slavery is zero pay. <laughs> they had a dream that one day their sons and daughters and grandsons and granddaughters, great grandsons, great granddaughters, might pursue prosperity and happiness in this land. I think this man should get a straitjacket. 
Me, it's a straight I'd hate to have been told I have to be operated on by this guy. No way! No way! <laughs> not only would I get a second and third opinion, he will not be one of the opinions. <laughs> Close the door on that guy. Oh, oh shit. I cut myself shaving. And nice. I, and I, I, now I got a, a boo-boo here that's showing up on the air. Nobody ah. can, I can't see it. No, you can't see it? Nope. Ah. Damn it. Nope. Now we don't have makeup girls here, so. I finally got my shaving implements and et cetera, but I have not tried them yet. Oh, yes. You, you show, you told me about, uh -huh, about it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, you see the new one by Norelco? It's like a little, it's a little, um, little T-shaped. Gizmo. I think this is uh, it's a little baby. I think this is a Remington. It, it's like it looks like um, it, it's it's the size of a. I know we're thing. digressing here. It's the size of a. It it's. It's it's a little bigger than a regular razor, but it's chargeable, and yeah. it's 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 supposed to uh, give you. You know, it shows the guy going against the grain and getting super close shave from it. And it's little, little portable thing, you know. Anyway, continue. But the slaves were no more immigrants than rape is making love. Nor is it difficult to tell the difference. I need a drink right now. Immigrants <laughs> booked passage and came to these shores in steerage, <sighs> enduring heat, stench, and cramped conditions yeah. in hopes of better lives in America. And I get seasick really bad. Can you imagine? Oh. Slaves were kidnapped. That's came, right. Came to these shores shackled. That's right. They were kidnapped. The immigrants that uh, Ben Carson's talking about were not kidnapped. Stupid. Uh, stupid flying cheek to cheek in their own body waste. This guy, this guy really has one hell of a fucking nerve to, to expect the American people to believe his insanity. Seriously. Well, Trump, he did. Made him Secretary of HUD. Is Trump, this, even in Trump's business, does, does Trump have a lot of advisors? Because the, I'm, I'm looking at the insanity <laughs> of his administration and at all of his uh, cabinet selections. Then I'm looking at his businesses and the fact that he's a multi-multi-billionaire. Something is missing from this picture. Uh -huh. how, how can you be how can you be a, a Mr. Brilliant businessman multi-billionaire businessman and then uh -huh. be capable of selecting an insane asylum for your cabinet selections. Something's missing from this picture. Immigrants disembarked at Ellis Island where they endured questioning, health inspections, before being allowed to enter the country. Yeah, enter the country and move, moving to their enclaves, basically. Slaves disembarked at places like Annapolis, Maryland, Charleston, South Carolina, and Savannah, Georgia. Hold on. Where families were snatched away from one another, had their bodies probed by foreign fingers, then were sold at auction, sometimes on credit. Remember Mandingo when the, uh, the white cracker a uh, 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 plantation woman would uh, would fondle the genitalia, would examine the genitalia of the of the big black slave men. Yeah. And she uh, it was a market for slaves where they purchased slaves, and the woman was jiggling their balls, jiggling their columes. Well, she wanted to test them out, man. She wanted to see if they had. If man, they were hung. the big male black. She wanted to see if they had a schlong. That yeah. would be worthy of her purchase. And be, yeah, it was working. Unlike her husband. A working shot. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the white, the boss hog husband. I say that. Oh, no, that's Fargo or Leghorn. I say that, son. Yeah. 
much more workable and, and larger than her cracker husband. Immigrants stood staring up at the towers of New York City and were daunted and inspired by the universe of possibilities they represented. Slaves stood staring down at fields of cotton or tobacco Jerbaki. at the overseer's whip at a thin mattress of corn shucks in a tiny cabin where winter's icy breath came slicing through the cracks. Corn shucks? Oh, you mean like, was it corn leaves? The leaves, right? Yeah. Or is corn, or is corn cob, <laughs> dried corn cob fragments, which are sold in the pet industry, crushed corn cob can make, can make a, uh, a mattress, a good mattress. Rather noisy, though, because every time you move around, it goes, <laughs> shh, 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 shh. Yeah. Anyway and try to understand that this life was now and that death would be their only freedom. Immigrants relocated. Slaves were relocated. They had no more say in the matter than a chair moved from one side of the room to the other. After being excoriated for his apparent ignorance of this, Carson issued a statement on Facebook that said the immigrant and slave experiences were different and should never be intertwined. <laughs> Which doesn't explain why he did exactly that. Maybe he has a mental problem. Well, it is because Republicans are deficient in certain knowledge of the world and history they, because um, they have they have made up their history and world view well they, they also they tend to trivialize the plight of course of anyone who is not wealthy of course they they will never take your plight seriously because they don't care That's if you exactly if you, what if, it is if you if you gave them some truth serum what do they call it? Sodium pentothal? Yeah. And ask them flat out, they would say, you know what? I have mine and I don't care about you or anybody else. That's what they would say, you know. It's hard not to see this as part of an ongoing campaign by the political right to arrogate or neuter entirely the language of politics and social grievance. Consider how, in the last 25 years, liberal and feminist became curse words, and racism was redefined as speaking about race. Now it's becoming sadly common to hear enslaved Africans described as workers, settlers, and yes, immigrants. Words you must understand and wait and effect. So this campaign is neither incidental nor accident. No, like Holocaust denial, it is an attempt to minimize and trivialize a crucial of a crucible, excuse me, of agony, to rob it of pathos, to render it unworthy of reverence. It's heartbreaking to have to explain to anyone why this is wrong. It's pathetic to have to explain it to a 65-year-old African-American man. Uh, 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 a medical, a person who supposedly had a high level of education, you wouldn't think so, and training, and, and, and was a neurosurgeon? Yeah. So you would think Gee, a person his age that went to college, that went to medical school, that had experience, heaven help his patients, uh, performing neurosurgery would know better, would have at least common sense. Exactly. Oh, nice. Oh, boy. Manudge, manudge. President Donald Trump. 
accused President Barack Obama of wiretrap tapping Trump Tower. But did he? During the campaign. He accused him. Over the weekend. And now Senators Lindsey Graham, Sheldon Whitehouse, are asking the Justice Department to prove it. The bipartisan pair, who are chairman and ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Subcommittee on Crime and Terrorism, sent a letter on Wednesday to the FBI Director and the Acting Deputy Attorney General asking for specific information. Acting Deputy Attorney General Dana Boente is in charge of the Russia probe because Attorney General Jeff Sessions recused himself last week from any investigation involving Russia and Trump. We request that the Department of Justice provide us copies of any warrant applications and court orders redacted as necessary to protect intelligence sources and methods that may be compromised by disclosure and to protect any ongoing investigations related to wiretaps of the Trump, the Trump campaign, or Trump Tower. We will be glad to review any such applications and orders once they are disclosed. FBI Director James Comey has said Obama did not authorize any wiretaps and has asked the Justice Department to refute accusations publicly. Obama's spokesman has called the accusations false. But the White House has said Trump doesn't accept Comey's denial and has called for an investigation into the allegations. It would be illegal, illegal, for the president to authorize a wire. As chairman and ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee's Subcommittee on Crime and Terrorism, we would take any abuse of wiretapping authorities for political purposes very, very serious. We would be equally alarmed to learn that a court found enough evidence of criminal activity or contact with a foreign power to legally authorize a wiretap of Trump, the Trump campaign, or Trump Town. I notice uh, that it's puzzling uh, you know, that WikiLeaks, you know, Julia San Julian Assange's WikiLeaks and Anonymous, both of them, after all these many, many months have flown by, no one high up that was under suspect of anything underhanded was ever really brought to justice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nothing was solved. Mm -hmm. So that whole theory about the uh, the oligarchy having everything rigged and everything everybody paid off it might very well be true. Everything might very well be totally rigged. Because I don't have any faith in the two-party system, and I really hope that, you know, there's a lot of former Bernie Kratz and Bernie Bros and, and, and dedicated progressives that want that third progressive party. They want it. They want it. Don't tell me I gotta let you out now. Oh, come on, you two are gonna... No, nah, never mind. She'll be out when we crank it up. All right. She'll stay. She's not pushy like the uh, Steve. But you know what? Nothing was ever resolved by all these uh, 
do-gooders with spandex and capes, all these superheroes out there, and WikiLeaks, Anonymous, who was really brought to justice? What has really changed? No. Has anybody on Wall Street seen the inside of a prison yet? No. But Iceland and uh, yeah. and Northern Europe sure takes care of business. Yeah. Well, in America, that stuff is part of business. That's why. I mean, being a crook. Yeah. <laughs> That's what capitalism is based upon. Capitalism. Yeah. And the worst part is. You have these people, like I said before, that don't have a pot to piss in, that, that um, choose not to see it, or they, 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 they don't have enough brain cells to really see it, or they're just bewitched by their cult. Or they believe un uninformed sources, like not understanding that Obamacare was the Affordable Care Act, or so in Kentucky, it was called Connect. Yeah, they, and the Southerners, the I mean, the rednecks was there. I don't want no old bummer care. I oh no, what about the Affordable Care Act? That's oh, okay. that sounds good. I like that. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> so that's what happens if you keep believing propaganda in place of yeah. the real truth. You know when it finally dawned on me why why so many American men watch Fox News? It's the chicks! <laughs> they, do, do, they do what the Latin uh, stations do. They use the chicks, man, for ratings. Especially car commercials on the Latin stations. Forget about it. You know, the Greta Van Strustrom, Sustrom. Oh, that one with the crooked face? Yeah, it came oh. over to uh, MSNBC. She did? From Fox. No, she did? Yeah. She got pissed at Fox. I they, don't know why. They you fucked know. her over, right? I, they might have, or for her contract. Yeah, but MSNBC. Her contract ran out, whatever. But MSNBC is but not she's the... she's there M now. Yeah, it's not the MSNBC we once knew. You know, of Ed Schultz and Keith Olbermann. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not. And what's and and uh, Rachel Maddow is a big time uh, corporate whore, sellout. Rachel Maddow. I recently enrolled in an internet dating site. Oh, I'm glad you brought up this reading because a friend of mine was telling me about how pissed off he is or oh. disappointed. I right, go ahead. And I have been cyber chatting with a very sweet gentleman. How does she know he's sweet? I am also 62 years young. Oh, God. Oh, God. My problem is I'm borderline obese. Oh, my God. That's all I, that's all, that, that, that's the image I really want in my head is an old bag, a fat old bag having sex. I yeah. have gray hair. A few wrinkles. Yeah, just a few. And some dental problems. <laughs> it's the reason I don't post photos of myself. Some dental problems. Well, he's sweet because he hasn't seen you yet. <laughs> Someday. Oh, man. He may want to meet face to face. Holy shit. You mean they haven't done, like, Skype? No video yet? Oh, my God. You know what? And I am more petrified than 2,000-year-old wood. He sounds and speaks so well, soft and gentle. Soft and gentle, huh? Well, let me tell you, that soft and gentle is going to be heading for the hills really quick. My heart has butterfly wing feelings. Not the head over heels emotions. I had when I first met my late husband. I hope you don't think I'm, I have compassion for the story, which I don't. Or empathy. Go ahead. Should I keep texting this gentleman or just fade away from him? Lady, just fade away into the sunset. <laughs> this is uh, Dear Abby's. Uh, There's a lot of ugly motherfuckers on online dating.
answer. A lot. Especially Zeusk. Keep texting him, of course. <laughs> nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah, sure. And remember, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Sure it is, sure it is. That but, said, and, yeah, okay. if your weight and dental problems are affecting your self-esteem, perhaps it's time you dealt with them rather than use them as an excuse to cut and run. You know, uh, these people are also selfish like cigarette smokers because what what they'll do is they'll join online dating and and from what I understand is multitudes that do it they'll join online dating uh, before they spruce themselves up to look for a new man and you know when you go shopping uh, don't you wouldn't you like to buy the most attractive fruits or do you uh, want the fruits with flies around it you know, and half rotted out. Really? You know what I mean? You have to prepare the package for sales. To ca uh, eye candy, you got to be or at least try, try your best to be partially eye candy. But my God! <coughs> All right, go ahead. I have been in a relationship with the wonderful man for the last year and a half. He is good to me and good to my 11-year-old daughter. Recently, a man I have known for 40 years, but have been in, out of, in and out of touch with him, appeared back in my life. He was my first kiss at age six. Age and what? That, age six. And there were many unresolved feelings that I felt needed exploring. My daughter caught on and told me if I gave up my current relationship, she would never forgive me. So I ended the relationship with my old friend, which left him with bitter feelings. Did I do the right thing? Why do mothers let their kids control them instead of the other way around? This, this is one of my, my, my biggest peeves, is, is modern day parenting how they coddle them and, and they negotiate with them. You're the boss, you're the alpha, remember that. Go ahead. Answer. Because you felt it was appropriate to allow an 11 year old to dictate your future, then yes, I suppose you did the right thing. In any case, it's a little late to second guess yourself now. All right. Oh, God. That's it for those. Uh, they, oh, we still have time. Yeah, we have What do you want me to time, do? You want me to let her out? I might as well let yes, her out. Yes, let her out, of course. Let me, well, of course, of course. The cat's the boss. Of course. Come, oh, come on, you got to go. Let's go, Mama. Or whatever your name is, because you all look alike to me. <laughs> Oh, let me get some fresh air. Hi. I needed it after all that ugly, uh, ugly uh, chicky poo uh, articles, readings. Uh, oh. Looks like I. Um, what happened? I only have belongings here. You know what? I think the same person that was uh, talking shit about our shows might have been the same person. The same motherfucker that mentioned about me getting up a lot. Excuse me for a second. Uh -uh. I need to I need to vent, rant for thirty seconds. You got a fucking problem? I'm looking at you, uh, cyberspace. Whoever it is, send me an email if you got a fucking problem. Because you're telling people I know. Uh, crap. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh. If you want to look at business as usual American media, watch CNN. What can I tell you? You want to see people in suits and ties, in state-of-the-art uh, studios, instead of real down-home, down-to-earth, grassroots revolution environment like this one? 
And then you gotta bust my balls complaining that I get up off my seat all the time. So don't watch. Go fuck yourself. Ooh, whoa, whoa, baby. Hey, tell me something. I, I, I appreciate others that are true progressive warriors, like, you know, your Sank Iker of uh, Young Turks and uh, Mr. Cousins of Ring of Fire and uh, Debbie of, um, not Debbie does Dallas, uh, Debbie of the, uh, the, well, Jimmy Dore of the aggressive progressive Jimmy Dore. Debbie of the same progressive, but Debbie does what Jill Stein does. She does a video with, um, it looks like a, a, a wall in her in her house, which is all right. You know, that's, same thing with Jill Stein. They do it, eh, but, but they have a huge following. Oh, I can understand Jill Stein, you know. Jill Stein is, um, um pretty popular. Uh, uh, she has a PhD and she's a politician. And so I, you know, I understand her, her following, you know, even though she never stops smiling when she does a video. <clears throat> Debbie, uh, is very dramatic. Uh, maybe that's part of her charm, why she has such a huge following. I take us, we're, we're naturally funny as all hell and witty. Um, but, and we have props, we have more things going on here. So, I can't really explain what makes humanity, uh, uh, gravitate to something and, and make it literally go viral, you know, and, 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 and just blow the roof off when other things don't, you know. We try, we do our best here, but I, I just don't understand uh, what makes things super popular in a modern day America or the world. I mean, what, what does it take? You know, it just, uh, you, you try to analyze the situation. Maybe people like a dramatic personality, uh, like they like a Richard Simmons to hold you by the hand. I really don't, I really don't see the reason. I really don't know. So for those that criticize about how come you don't have millions of hits, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. All I know is we have pretty heavy duty content. Our show is very, very rich in content. That's all I could say. And we're, we also have personality and we have wit <laughs> and we have natural humor and we're ad-libbed. Nothing is rehearsed here. So, I don't know. I, I cannot logically explain everything in life. This is one of the mysteries of life. Is what makes some uh, ham and egger, Johnny come lately, uh, uh, put their st stuff on the, on the internet and it goes viral. I have no idea. I don't know. But people in general are pretty fucking stupid nowadays. All right, go ahead. Congressman Bill Pascrell. Ah, Bill Pascrell of our district, of our district. That a not very much used law amended in 1924 because of the Teapot Dome scandal right. can be used to get at President Donald Trump's tax returns. We're still waiting for that? <laughs> Alas! Representative Kevin Brady, Republican of Texas, who heads the Ways and Means Committee, will not use it. Why? This is a new one. This is a new reading, right? Okay. What is hidden in those tax returns? <laughs> what ties does Trump have with Russia? Why are the Republicans putting their party before their own country? These are perilous times and we are in desperate need of more heroes like Bill Pascrow. And why is the D why hasn't the DNC learned from their 2016 mistakes? Huh. They haven't. They're, they they are not embracing progressiveness at all. 
No, they're not. Their their interest right now is to bring the party together. And what they ex what do they expect to do? I don't know. But How uh, do they? Expect? To, they expect to win. Bring the party together so they can win the 2018 election. But they already left a very bad taste in uh -huh. many, many progressives' mouths. Uh -huh. So unless they embrace uh, Bernie Sanders' ideas, it might not happen. We might end up with a second, oh my God, Trump or at least the second Republican administration. And then the poor might as well check into the nearest funeral parlor. <laughs> Do it ahead of time. Not being a big fan of Donald Trump, I was nevertheless enlightened by parts of his comments at a recent press conference. His rantings, as a rule, are a bit much. But some are right on. Well, Why yeah. indeed did the national media not condemn the fact that Hillary Clinton did not come forth and say that she was offered questions? They protected Hillary in advance profusely of a presidential primary debate. She remained silent about the illicit in advance questions and their source. Trump asked if he would have received the same treatment from the press. On another note, the source of these illicit questions, Donna Brazile, after being removed by CNN, continued to hold a top position with the Democratic National Committee. The silence from the National Committee on this matter was deafening. For once, Trump hit the nail on the head. What did you expect? Oratorical brilliance? Study and analysis? This is what we get with Donald Trump. A fumbling, mumbling, stumbling mess. All that, wow. An incoherence that threatens anything he touches. Along the way, there were also casualties. Hopefully not in lost lives, but most certainly in opportunity squandered and in an alliance is damaged or destroyed. All we can hope for is that Trump occasionally stumbles into solutions to problems by pure serendipity. The other day it was the Israeli-Palestinian debacle, and whether the president wished for a one-state or two-state solution. Tomorrow it could and most surely will be something of equally momentous import and consequence. Every tweet that comes out of his head, every phrase that tumbles out of his mouth is a potential four alarm fire. This hope. We have plenty of extinguishers at the ready. We will need them. Yeah, well, fortunately, the Republican Party is very, very much pro, pro Israel, and I am against giving one red cent, let alone bill, uh, God knows how many billions per year that the United States sends to Israel. And uh, it's probably taxpayers' money, and it's only because of the uh, the, uh, the Zionist uh, 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 stronghold in the United States that this is happening. But uh, and of course, of course, why on earth 
do they continue to do business with Saudi Arabia is beyond me. Oh, I'm sure you know the reasons why they should cease to do this. And that's about it. Anyway, got to bang up early today. I have things to do. Uh, thank you for joining us this week for Progressive Discussions. We'll do a nice little St. Patrick's Day theme, you know. Uh, we'll, we'll do something on the next show, all right? Take care. Have fun. Have a safe weekend. Have a safe week.